Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Quarters studio for the third time today. Welcome to the show. So if you haven't seen my episodes on Itomi and uh, Nevenral, I believe those are the two that came out today, go ahead and check those out. Uh, yeah, really exciting commanders in Commander Legends. And this is yet another exciting one. The hits just keep coming. I mean, they, they really do. Uh, Arami of the Dead Tide is the commander I'm going to be talking about in this episode. Arami of the Dead Tide is a 1-4 Merfolk wizard that costs 1 blue black, has tap exile cards from your graveyard equal to the number of opponents you have. Target creature card in your graveyard gains Encore until end of turn. The Encore cost is equal to its mana cost. So Encore is a new mechanic in this set. In an actual example, we can see with Amphin Mutineer, it's got Encore for Encore for four blue blue, and it says exile this card from your graveyard. For each opponent, create a token that's a copy that attacks that opponent this turn of able. They gain haste, sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step, activate only as a sorcery. So for this Encore cost, and for a lot of the other ones, it actually seems like the Encore cost is higher than the actual cost of the creature. But again, for our commander, it makes it so it's the exact same as the mana cost for that creature. So this is a tap effect. So again, you're only getting this one time around the table, or multiple if you've got on tap effects, and we'll talk about that. But that first part is really unique. Exile cards from your graveyard equal to the number of opponents you have. So I don't know if we've really seen kind of any kind of, you know, exile based off of opponents, but... This is a really interesting card. It definitely gets better throughout the game. The less opponents that there are, the less cards that you have to exile from your graveyard. And exiling cards from your graveyard, not the best thing for a deck that's looking to really use and abuse the cards in its graveyard. But again, you're in Demir. You've got plenty of ways to mill yourself. And yeah, the further the game goes on, the less cards you're going to have to exile with this commander. So first off, let's just talk about some mill effects that can be uh, very good for this deck. Basically, you want repeatable mill effects because you want to just keep dumping a ton of cards into your graveyard so that you don't have to worry about, you know, picking and choosing, you know, certain cards, you know, like, oh, I really like this creature and I really like this one too in my graveyard, but I'm going to have to exile one of them to actually be able to encore the other one. So mill effects like Perpetual Timepiece, Chronic Flooding, Altar of Dementia can be great for a deck like this. Uh, Perpetual Timepiece has tap with the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. You can also I don't, you probably wouldn't be doing this in the deck, but you can also uh, pay to an exile it to shuffle a number of target cards in your graveyard in your library. Maybe you're going to be doing that, but most of the time you're probably just going to be tapping it to mill yourself for two each turn, which can be great. Chronic Flooding can help you even further. Uh, Enchant Land, whenever Enchant Land becomes tapped, its controller puts the top three cards of their library to their graveyard. So yeah, you can just put this on one of your lands. Every single time you tap that land, it's going to be three each turn. Uh, Altar of Dementia can be a fantastic one for this deck. Sacrifice a creature, target player puts a number of cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power from the top of their library into their graveyard. This can help you out in multiple ways. First off, let's say that you've got a creature in play that, you know, ha maybe has an ETB or an LTB, and you really want to get that Encore because you want multiple copies of the creature for whatever reason. Then you can sacrifice them, mill yourself for a bit, and then, you know, use your commander to help you basically recast or, you know, Encore your creature back into play as multiple copies of itself. Also, those tokens that you are getting, uh, the Encore tokens, I don't know what we're exactly calling them, but let's just go with that. The Encore tokens, they do have haste, they're attacking uh, one of each of your opponents, but then you have to sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step anyways, so you might as well sacrifice them to Alter of Dimension just to mill yourself even further. So yeah, this is a card that can definitely help you out in multiple ways. Again, the more cards that you're milling yourself, the, the better throughout the game. Uh, creatures that you can actually Encore to help you with milling as well, like a Stitcher Supplier. When it enters the battlefield or dies, put the top three cards of your library in your graveyard. So yeah, one mana to mill yourself for six is fantastic. One mana to mill yourself for 18 with three Encore copies is even better. I guess I should mention, I did say that your commander does get better, you know, throughout the game. I, there is kind of, I guess, a balance to that. Your commander gets better in that the activation is, you know, the last card you're exiling, but you're also getting less Encore tokens in play. So keep that in mind. Again, there's, I guess, a balance of, you know, how good something is based off how many phones are left. Uh, Sage's Row Denizen is another creature that can help with mill, but in a different way. It says whenever another blue creature enters the battlefield under your control, target player puts the top two cards of the library into their graveyard. 
if you're encoring a blue creature, you're getting three uh, three copies of that. So essentially, any blue encore is going to give you, you know, mill yourself six, essentially. Uh, Sphinx of Athun says, when it enters the battlefield, reveal the top five cards of your library and opponent separates those cards into piles. Put one into your hand, the other into your graveyard. This is a factor fiction. Uh, encoring this, yeah, seven mana is a decent amount. But, you know, when you factor fiction three times for seven mana, that's well worth it. So, yeah, that's definitely another one that you can uh, use and, and be efficient with. Um, untapping your commander, I did mention this basically, but cards like Cerulean Wisps, ones that, you know, are a cantrip that can untap your commander and then draw you a card, that can be effective. Uh, repeatable effects like an Effetible Alchemist that can tap to untap target artifact or creature can be very beneficial as well. Again, if you've got multiple things to encore in your graveyard, that's great. Go for it. Uh, Quarter Monitor is another one that actually encoring this one can be very effective uh, depending on your mana rock situation. You might actually even net mana out of it. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, untap target artifact or creature you control. So with one of those Quarter Monitor encore tokens coming into play, you can untap your commander. And then with the other two, you can untap, you know, a mana rock or two and then be able to actually either kind of come out even or net mana. Speaking of coming out even or netting mana, let's talk about Cloud of Fairies or Peregrine Drake. These are fantastic uh, Encore targets, essentially are targets for your commander to Encore. Cloud of Fairies, when it enters the battlefield, untap two lands. Peregrine Drake, when it enters the battlefield, untap five. So basically, again, if you've got three opponents, you're going to be getting a lot of value out of each of these. Cloud of Fairies, you pay two, you untap six lands. Peregrine Drake, you pay five, you untap 15. So you're netting a lot of mana. Again, I guess I should mention again that depending on the number of opponents, the more effective or less effective these things become, or I guess less effective if there's less opponents. So anyways, Embalmer's Tools is a card that can also help you in, with mana in a different way. It says activate abilities of creature cards in your graveyard cost one less to activate. So basically you can use, you know, you're utilizing your commander to give one of your creatures Encore uh, in your graveyard, and then you can activate that Encore for one less. So this basically kind of saves you one mana for Encoring your creature, which can add up throughout the game for a deck that's looking to Encore's creatures quite a bit. Now let's talk about some finishers for this deck, though. Some cards that you can generate an absurd amount of value, kind of with multiple copies with multiple ETBs. Again, I'd focus probably on some heavy hitters, some big ETBs, LTBs, um, cards like Diluvian Primordial and Sepulchre Primordial, two of the Primordials. Uh, Diluvian says when it enters the battlefield for each opponent, you may cast up to one target instant or sorcery card from that player's graveyard without paying its mana cost. If a card cast this way, you put into a graveyard this turn, exile instead. So yeah. Encoring this, you are getting nine. I mean, if you got all three of your opponents, you're getting nine different instants and sorceries. If you know the each person's you know uh, graveyard kind of accommodates for that, but later on in the game it probably does, and you're getting an absurd amount of value just casting thing after thing after thing. Yeah, that's going to be very powerful. Sepulchral, Pri Sepulchral Primordial is powerful in a different way. When it enters the battlefield for each opponent, you may put up to one target creature card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Yeah, this can get you what again nine creatures essentially for seven mana, you know, end of game, as long as all your opponents are alive. Regardless, a very powerful thing to get multiple copies of. Uh, Overseer of the Damned is another kind of finisher that can be very effective. When it enters the battlefield, you may destroy target creature. Whenever a non-token creature opponent controls dies, create a tap 2-2 black zombie creature token. Yeah, this can get you some tokens, it can destroy some creatures, and it's going to be hitting you know, a 5-5 five, five flyer. I guess I should have mentioned that with the last creatures too. You know, five power coming at each opponent is not a bad thing, you know, uh, by any standard. Uh, Masker Worm, or by certain standards, I guess, depending on the time of the game and uh, what creatures are in play. Masker Worm can be an absolutely absurd creature in this deck. When there's the battlefield, creatures your opponent's control get minus two, minus two until end of turn. Whenever a creature opponent controls dies, that player loses two life. This gives all your opponent's creatures, let's say, again, you've got three opponents, minus six, minus six, and then they each lose six life for each creature that died. This by itself, just by... Encoring this, depending on the board situation, can literally just take out all of your opponents at once, and yeah, that's pretty absurd. And of course, Agent of Treachery, everyone's favorite blue creature with an ETB. When it enters the battlefield, gain control of target permanent. At the beginning of your end step, if you control three or more permanents you don't own, draw three cards. So basically, this is just permanently steal three things. At the end of your turn, you do it to sacrifice the Agent of Treacheries, but you also just get to draw nine cards, because I believe both are at the end of the turn. So yeah, steal three things, draw nine cards for seven mana. Yeah, I'll take that. So uh, again, that I guess that is assuming that this two three survives combat. So it might it very well might not, but you might draw some cards out of it. Regardless, there are a lot of very powerful creatures with ETBs, LTBs that you can really use and abuse by getting multiple copies of them with a Rami. I really like this commander. Again, it's kind of interesting how you've got kind of that dichotomy of getting better and worse throughout the game. Again, you're exiling more cards at the beginning from your graveyard to use it, but you're getting more encore token copies. And then later on in the game, you exile less and get less copies. So 
there is kind of that balance to it. I really like the design of this one. But yeah, now it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this commander are. What kind of cards would you include in this deck? So yeah, let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks again. Have a good one.